Hello, Michael here with another How Do I Render tutorial. Today we're going to be making a bottle of wine and we're going to use the uh, Pixar layer surface material to add a label to it and we're also going to use that same material to add a layer of dust to it which we're going to bake out and I'm going to show you how to do that toward the end. So let's get right into it. Uh, as you'll see, I've already got a scene set up here. I've just got a plane for the floor and a couple of lights in there just for lighting it. And you'll also see that I've already textured the uh, lid uh, just for the sake of speed on this tutorial so it doesn't get too long. I'm not going to really cover the cork. Um, it's just a simple uh, cork texture that I made with um, 3D coat. The really interesting part is the wine bottle, so let's do that. So I've already UV mapped this. I'll show you what the UV map looks like. Um, so you'll see I've got a couple of different islands there. It's important to note that I've split the uh, face sort of into two parts because I want to easily apply a, a wine label to one of those parts of the front or back, um, in this case the front obviously. And um, so just bearing in mind that this is going to be the front, so that's going to be that island when we're in Photoshop. And you'll see that I've got some other uh, islands set up there as well. I've got one at the top there, so I can put a label across there if I wish. Um, and also down the bottom there if I wanted to do something weird. That's not normally where a label would go though. So to get started on that, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to select our wine bottle and we're going to go up to the ball and we're going to select Pixar layer surface. If you haven't watched the Pixar layer surface tutorial, I recommend you do so before you watch this tutorial. It gives a lot clear, a lot more in-depth overview of how that shader works. So getting into it now, the first thing I'm going to do is select the channel um, node and we're going to disable layer one and we're just going to have the base layer for now. Then we're going to go in and we're going to disable the diffuse and go down to glass and enable it. And this is going to be our glass layer. So let's name it. Otherwise we'll start getting confused when there's a lot more layers involved. So we're going to increase the refraction gain to 1.0 and the reflection gain to 1.0 and we are going to change the refractive index to be 1.3 because I think that's sort of glass and the refraction color is if you look at a wine bottle you will notice that uh, they are green the glass is green so we're going to use a green color I've already got one selected here so if you want to use the same one I've got color management on I've got rendering space uh, for mixing color and I'm using 112 in the hue, 1 in the saturation, and 0.072 in the value. And if we just take a quick render of that now, you'll see that we've got something that already looks kind of like a wine glass, which is pretty good. So in case there's anyone out there that doesn't know how to do this, I'm just going to do it really quickly. So we're going to select our object, um, and then we're going to go to the UV layout. I'm going to hold down right click and select UV. Select all the islands. Go to polygons, UV snapshot, and then we're going to save out the UV. We want to do this as a PNG uh, because I want the alpha channel to be able to mask off in uh, mask off areas in the future with the layer mixer. Uh, so 2048 by 2048 is going to be our resolution and save it out to a uh, file somewhere in your project which you've already created and saved a scene in I hope and then click OK. So you'll see that I've already created a label. I'm not going to go through the whole, whole process of designing a label because that would be a tutorial in of itself. However, I'll just point out a couple of things that I did that are going to be useful for you. So uh, when you're creating your label, you can apply some effects to it, which are going to make it a little bit more believable in the render rather than just having it flat. One of those things is creating some texture. So you'll see on the label, I've got a little bit of texture uh, behind and we're going to use that to create a bump map. So I've created a new square, which is this one here. You can see it highlighted. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select the primary color that I want for it, which is that color there. And then on the secondary color, I'm going to make it slightly darker. And that's so when we go to filter, we can go to filter gallery and then go down to sketch and go to note paper. And you'll see that you get this texture. This will just give a little bit of surface variation to the label overall. And you can blend it in with your text you can use a text in conjunction with it so if I use this with this text on top and the, the rest of the text on top in the image the darker areas of the texture would be deeper and the writing will also be embossed if I include that in the bump map 
Otherwise, I could just use this one texture layer as the bump map for the entire thing, or I could use it all as the bump map, but obviously having this image here in the center would be a little bit unusual for a bump map. So I'm going to save out this image uh, first of all. So I'll just turn off this one that I've, uh, actually, I kind of like this new one. I might stick with that. Um, so I'm going to turn off the old one and I'm going to, actually I'll keep it at, I'll keep it at that um, opacity and I'll adjust the bump map for it in, in Maya. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to save out our texture layer. So if we're happy with our label, uh, we need to turn off the black um, layer that I put in behind so I could see the UV lines. And then we need to turn off our UV lines as well, just so there's not any UV lines over any other parts of the image. And then we're going to go um, quicker to do this is Control Shift Alt and S which is a save for web, but we can use it to save as a PNG as long as you set the quality to be 100%. Um, and then the image size to be 10, uh, 2048, which was what we saved it out as. And then you can see here, the only part of that's on that image that's coming out is our label. So we'll save that and we'll call it label and save and replace. All right, so now let's do the bump map for it. So we'll include the text on all the text um, as part of our bump map, but we'll get rid of this image here. So now our bump map will only be affected by the texture here, and then this text will be embossed. So once again, Control, Alt, Shift, and S, and save, and we're gonna call this label bump. Save that and replace it. All right, that's all there is to the label. So I'm just gonna minimize Photoshop and get back into Maya. So back in the Hypershade Editor now, so we've got our layer um, surface mapped out here. Just gonna put that around the right way. So our glass is up the top here. This one here is gonna be our label. So we'll change that to label. And remembering that our layers are hierarchical. So that means that the higher you go up in numbers, the closer it is to the top. So two will be higher than one and one's higher than the base layer, obviously. So let's uh, jump into our diffuse channel. We're gonna to go to color and select the checker box, go file, open, and get our label, which is that one there. All right, so with our label, we're gonna use the out from our label file node into layer one mask. So that masks off all the areas that aren't the label. Therefore, this layer will be transparent apart from the label. We're also gonna jump in here and enable that layer. And then we're gonna grab a bump map for this. We'll select um, advanced and then go to bump. We'll click the checker box. We'll select a render man and we'll type in bump. And we get PXR bump. That will create that node. If we select this now and go to file name and open, go to assets or wherever you saved your thing to, and we'll go label bump. Select that and that's it. I think that should be good. So let's just render now and see what happens. All right, so we've got our label. You can see it looks a little bit funny though. If we zoom in here, we'll see what's going on. So our bump map is getting a little bit too intense, but you can see it is in fact working. So it's uh, embossing our text and our surface texture, and it's also creating a little bit of lift around the edge. So it looks like it's sitting on top of the glass. However, it's a bit too extreme at the moment. So, um, and also because we used this bump map for the overall, it's also creating a texture over our image as well, which is important to note. So if you didn't want that, you would have to mask that off. Uh, but I do want it because the theoretically that image is printed on this label, therefore will receive the same texture. So let's jump back into the Hypershade Editor, go to our bump, and I believe 0.05 will do the trick. Might have to go a little bit further than that. So let's try 0.01 and scale for our bump. All right, that's starting to look a little bit better, actually a lot better. So I'm gonna stick with that for now, Let's zoom out. And as you can see, it's not getting that weird darkness that it was before because it's not absorbing as much light. So our wine bottle is coming together. Um, we've got a label. Um, we could do a further label up the top here. Um, I'll plug one in using the same technique uh, to show you what it looks like. So what I've done there is I've created a label on the UV layout 
that just sits up on the top there. So generally a wine bottle is going to have a label, a, a sort of a label that wraps around the top of the, the nozzle of the wine uh, bottle and goes over the, to over the cap or the cork. Um, generally wine is capped nowadays, not corked. So you can tell this is a old vintage. Uh, but if you're wanting to do something like that, you can see that having a little bit of variation in your surface material can be quite effective. And um, that will make your bottle of wine look a little bit more modern. So all that, that's all well and good, uh, but how do we do dust? Well, we're going to have to get a little bit crazy here and use Maya's uh, hardware renderer to do this. So what we're going to do is I'm going to save. I'm going to go to full screen now, and we're going to go to options. I'm going to go to my hardware 2.0, close that for now. Then we're going to go to create, and lights and we're going to create a spotlight go to the channel box for that and rotate it on the x negative 90 yep so our objective here is to project some light over the top of the wine bottle it would be better if this wine bottle was in the scene center um, that's fine we can just use the top view so we're just going to put it over the center of the wine bottle from the top and essentially because dust drops from above most surfaces and sits on the top of it we can use a uh, light to create a sort of mask that we can use in our uv layout to create some dust and then re import that into maya again and connect it up with the layer surface if that's a little bit weird to understand stick with me i will show you how to do it so this light here sort of put it around there and we're going to make the color red we want it to be um, 360 red, a very easily selectable red um, because we're going to need to be able to select that in Photoshop momentarily. Uh, the cone angle will be 30, the penumbra angle is 10, and the drop off, uh, I think probably like 50 will do the trick. And uh, let's do a quick render of that. All right, so you'll see that with our render, we're getting light on top of the cork. Actually, I'm going to hide the cork because we don't need it for now. And then it's sort of slowly tapering off over the body of the bottle. I do want to get that neck a little bit more, so I'm just going to fiddle with that for a moment. All right, so I've hidden the cork, and you can see I'm getting a little bit more of the light on the neck of the uh, of the bottle and it's sort of fading off over the body so that's going to be fine um, and i'll add a little bit more on for the body as well using sort of that value of red um, in our uv layout so if that looks fine we can close the render view for that and then we're going to go to our viewport and we're going to open the outliner and we're going to select our wine bottle um, and it, we're actually going to need to assign a lambert to it so by default you'll have a, a lambert in your scene so make sure you have your bottle selected right click that and assign initial shading group to it and you'll see that it's turned that color which will be still renderable by render man but we don't like to use those shaders we're then going to duplicate that um, because we need a second mesh for this to work we can hide the hype shader for now and then we're going to go to rendering and we're going to go to lighting and shading and transfer maps all right, so the first thing you want to do is select your source mesh. That's going to be our first one. So we're going to go add selected for that. And the second, we're going to select the wine bottle one. And we're going to define that as our target mesh and add that in again. This doesn't really matter which way you do this around because they're identical. It'll be fine either way. And then we want to have our output mesh, uh, output map shaded because we're using the shading from the Maya render. And then you're going to select your output. So we're going to change our output to be a PNG. And our output can just be the default, which is images slash sampled color.png. And the rest is fine. So sometimes this will crash Maya. So just save and then bake. All right. If everything went according to plan, you should have something that looks like this. And unfortunately, you'll notice that this PNG didn't work as I expected it to. It has created a black background instead of a transparent one uh, it's probably because the mesh is black so we're going to go select we're going to go to color range we're going to select black um, and then you can use the fuzziness fuzziness to determine how much of that black will bleed into the red so it's sort of like a range so if all the way up you'll see it starts to feather it out a lot and we're going to put it about 
130 looks good. Click OK, and then we're gonna click Delete. So that's deleted the black area from our map. I'm gonna create a new layer now though, and I'm gonna hide that. But first we're gonna hold down, we're gonna select that layer, hold down Alt, do a color pack, and then go into layer one or our bottom layer. And we will fill it with the same color. So now we're gonna blend these two. Uh, the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to desaturate both of them. So we can do that, Control Shift U. So all we're really fussed on here is the value, not the color. The red was only so we could make it easy, easily separatable from our black background. Uh, so at the moment, this won't look like dust because it's a little bit too clean. We need to create some noise. So we're gonna go to filter, we're gonna go to noise, and we're gonna go add noise. And you'll see that's created some noise. You can make it monochromatic if you haven't desaturated it already. If you have it not monochromatic, you will get color in it. So you'll get RGB color, we don't want that. Um, you can either choose uniform or Gaussian. I'm gonna choose uniform because it blends into the taper of the overall gradient of our map. And then you can just determine the amount. So the lighter this is, the more visible it is, just so you know. We can change, we can affect this once we're back in Maya as well with some extra nodes, but it's just worth knowing. Getting a sort of nice range of, of, of values from sort of your mid-range to your higher range is probably the way to do it. So 100% is probably going to be it. And now it's just a little bit um, hard for my liking, so we're going to go to filter again, we're going to go to blur, and we're going to go to Gaussian blur. And we'll just back that off a bit. So I think point oh, uh, point 0.3 is going to be enough. Yeah, that looks like it's going to be okay. So I'm going to hide this background layer for now just so I can show you how this works. And go Control Shift Alt S again and save this out as a PNG. And this is going to be our dust layer. Save that, replace it because I'd already created it. And we can close that now. We can get rid of this because we no longer need it. We can go back to our render settings and go back to render man. We can delete our extra wine bottle and select our wine bottle and reapply our layer mix, uh, our layer surface shader to it. All right, so let's add the dust layer in. So we're gonna go select render man, type in layer and we'll get Pixar layer. Click that and you'll get a new node. Connect that up to layer three. And then the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a mask. So we're gonna uh, select Maya and we'll type in file, get a file node in there. And this is gonna be our dust mask. So we will select dust layer, open that up, out alpha into our layer three mask. And then this is our dust mask. So we'll call it dust. This is top label, so we'll call that top label. And then on this one, we're just gonna use the diffuse channel and we're gonna increase the roughness all the way up because dust is pretty rough. And then we'll take a render of that and see what it looks like. Need to auto also go to the mixer and enable that layer as well. All right, so we've got some dust happening. Unfortunately, due to this, the way this is modeled, there's some areas just missed by that UV map, unfortunately, but I'm just gonna roll with it for this tutorial. So you'll see that looks like a pretty thick layer of dust just sort of on the top of the uh, the rim of the bottle and that around that neck area. We can do a little bit better though, I think, if we go in and make the dust uniform through over the entire body of the bottle. So let's go back into Photoshop, re-enable this background layer, and I'm gonna try and grab, I'm gonna try and grab a value sort of in the lower range and then refill that layer. So it's a little bit lighter. I think I might just change that value to be a little bit lighter again. So that bleed bleeds off nicely. And then we'll select this layer, we'll go up to filter again, and we're gonna do the same thing with noise. So noise, add noise, use the same settings. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur, use the same settings. All right, so now if we save this, jump back in and then render again, you can see that our wine bottle now looks a little bit too dusty. 
So we're going to need to back off that dust layer. However, we can't do it the way we might have done with the layer mixer because we've got a mask plugged into it. So we want to interface this mask with a exposure node um, just to use it to control the output levels. So um, I know this is looking a little bit out of control, but bear with me. So that's the top layer one. We don't want that. This is dust. So these are the two that we're working on here. So we want to run our mask into an exposure node. So select render man, type in exposure, and we'll get an exposure node. And then we can just deconnect that um, alpha. And we'll have to use the alt color here because it only accepts an RGB input. Then we can just tap three on your keyboard to expand that out. And if we type in to float, we get a Pixar to float node. So what this does is it changes an RGB output to be essentially an alpha output or just a numerical value based on that. So we are going to run the result F into layer mask and then render again. And you'll see, if you look at this area of the wine bottle, the area where the dust that we created was is actually more transparent than the other area. So we want to invert that. All right, so we want to invert our exposure setting and we can do that by creating a Pixar invert node by just typing invert. There you'll get a node. If you click it and it actually creates one, there you go. Then we will run our exposure. Got a bonus one. We'll run our exposure into the invert and then our invert into the Pixar float and then the Pixar float into the mask and then Hopefully you're still with me because let's do a render and see what it looks like. All right, so now this is acting the way it should. So previously you could see that area was a bit darker um, because it was more transparent. Now the opposite is happening and this is starting to look like a legitimate dusty wine bottle. So we can change the way this works by, by default the exposure will be zero. So it will look something like this. If you go into the negatives, because we're inverting it, it will make it more opaque. If you go into the positives, however, it will make it more transparent to the point where it's very subtle. So you can use this quite effectively to control the amount of dust on your wine bottle. If you just want to be very subtle there, then it can be. Um, I sort of like about 2.0, I think looks, yeah, maybe 2.8. Yeah, somewhere around there. So it looks like it's been sitting around uh, and is a fine vintage indeed. Uh, so finally, I'll just pop the old lid back on and um, we'll set up the shot for render. So I've got two lights in the scene. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna light link this backlight here to the wine bottle and the cork only, so it's not illuminating the floor. Um, that's just so I can create a bit of a silhouette so it breaks the dark side of the bottle. So we'll go up to Windows, uh, relationship editors, light linking, object centric. So wine bottle is going to get rectangle two, plane is not going to get rectangle two, and cork is going to get rectangle two. So that should be fine. And then now when I compose my shot, it's going to be something like that, and run the IPR, you'll get a dusty wine bottle that looks just like that. And it is pretty effective. Obviously, I'm really cooking the old, uh, the dust at the moment. It's quite uh, quite pervasive, but I wanted to make it a little bit obvious for you all to be able to see. Uh, there is no liquid inside this wine bottle as well, which is why it's easy to see through it. Um, I'm assuming that some someone like me has already come along and drank it. Um, if it's anything like wine in my household, it doesn't last long. But that's pretty much all there is to it. I know this was sort of a fairly complex one. However, I thought it'd be worth sharing because it's sort of a cool technique to be able to know. You can apply this dust idea um, to any model. Um, it could be a, a dusty old lamp, it could be a dusty old speaker, it could be a dusty old Xbox controller. Anything that you like, you can use this exact same technique uh, just by baking it out in the method that I showed. So hopefully you were able to follow along with this fairly easily. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments below. Or if you've got any requests for tutorials like this, let me know there as well. If you haven't already, make sure you are subscribed because I'm doing a couple of these tutorials per week and um, you will be able to keep up to date with those. You'll also be able to keep up to date with them if you have liked the Facebook page, link in the description. That's it for now though. Thank you very much for watching and happy rendering.